This morning we welcome a guest preacher, Pastor Matthew Wheatfeld from Concordia Theological Seminary, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Pastor Wheatfeld will be with us all day today in the Alumni Heritage Room through those back doors and to your left. So if you're considering becoming a pastor or a deaconess or doing advanced studies in theology, by all means, visit him sometime today. We continue with the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, please stand for our reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, follow me. And he rose and followed him. And as Jesus reclined at table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and were reclining with Jesus and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard it, he said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. This is the word of the Lord. We join together in he singing hymn 518, stanzas 1, 25, and 3, and stanza 3 is a doxology, so we will stand for that, but you may now be seated. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Please sit. 
I bring greetings from your brothers and sisters in Christ at Concordia Theological Seminary, our faculty, staff, and our students, especially our president, Dr. Lawrence Rast, as we now celebrate our 175th anniversary of preaching, the, preaching to the faithful, teaching the lost, and caring for all. We thank you for your partnership in the gospel. This morning, we celebrate the gospel writer, St. Matthew, as we celebrate his feast day today. One of the greatest joys and yet the hardest things that parents have to do is finding a new name for their new baby that is about to be born and picking that just right name. Most couples try to find something that is both normal and not overused, but that is also slightly fun and hip, but not too far out there that the child will be teased for the rest of their life something meaningful, but not sappy or overly sentimental. But every once in a while, you hear about a name, usually from a celebrity, that just makes you stop and ask, what has this, these parents done to this poor child? What would make one name their child that? We hear things every once in a while in the news, things like, Apple, or Rocket, or my personal favorite from the magician known for his great, uh, great illusions in the magical duo Penn and Teller, Penn Gillette named his child Pilot Inspector. Yes, Pilot Inspector. Nevertheless, names are important. Names are important because they mean something. Names mean things. They are important to us, for they follow us throughout the course of our lives. And unless you go and change your name, they are given to you by someone else and are completely out of your control. They stick to you over the course of your life. Now, this morning, we celebrate the man named Matthew, gift of God. That's what his name means, the evangelist, the gospel writer. He is one of the four who penned their account by the gift of the Holy Spirit of our, the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. But that's not where Matthew's story begins as the gospel writer. No, his story begins wallowing in his sin, sitting there doing his vocation as the tax collector at his booth. He was one used by the Romans to collect the taxes due to them, an act that kept on going and really kept him in the in-between, not really having a place for him acting as one who stood between the Jews and the Romans. And similar to Zacchaeus, Matthew would have been seen as one that is deplorable by his own people, the Jewish people, a traitor to them, and not really cared for either by the Romans as one who was not a Roman. In all actuality, he was a man without a country. But then our Lord breaks into the scene. He enters Matthew's story and changes everything for him. For when Jesus enters our stories, everything that we previously thought was there is turned on its ear and completely changed. And on this day... When Jesus enters Matthew's story, he comes to the tax collector and says simple words to him, follow me. And solely by the gift of faith given to Matthew by the Holy Spirit, Matthew actually listens. He gets up and he follows Jesus. He leaves that tax collecting booth and that tax-collecting vocation, and follows Jesus. 
this interaction between Jesus and Matthew changes everything for Matthew. His occupation, his livelihood, his purpose, and ultimately the way in which the world sees Matthew, how the world views him and the works of his hands. We remember Matthew no longer as the tax collector, but one through our, that our Lord uses to work through, taking now him as our example of how Christ works through sinful men and giving us an example of the Christian life. We give thanks to our Lord for the man Matthew and for his work as well. And so taking him as an example, when our Lord speaks, we listen by faith. When the Lord calls, we follow. The Lord speaks and we speak back to him. That's the way that our liturgy works. We simply speak back to Jesus, what he has already spoken to us. That is how the faith works as well. To sing the liturgy is to simply sing the words of our Lord, and to be catechized is to be taught the faith, once taught by our Lord, who is the great teacher, and to in faith that as well. That's what it means to be a disciple. That's what it means to journey through this life in the Christian life. And it's not always the prettiest of journeys. No, we are sinners, and we muck things up day after day. But regardless of that, the Lord still works through us, through our sin, through our shortcomings, through our failures, and continues to progress His gospel, His good news, for us and through us. He is the one that calls us each by name, through the waters of holy baptism giving us a new name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He marks that on you and continues to forgive you of all of your sins each and every day of your lives. He does this all for you through the gift of, given by his Holy Spirit through your baptism that is faith, faith that clings to the words of our Lord, faith that holds on to them tightly, even when in sin we wish them not to be there. We receive these, his words, as tokens of his love for us. He continues to give them to us, and forgives us through his very cross, his passion, his blood shed for you. His word is there with you as he continues to speak his name of forgiveness upon you, as he continues to give you himself. For without them we are without worth, but he speaks to us words of forgiveness, words that give us our value and our worth for he has created us through them. In the holy name of Jesus. Amen. We stand for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of another day to serve you and worship you. Please bless us and be with us in the many tasks of the day and give us strength and energy and health for all the things we are called to do. Today, we include special petitions for the cousin of Sandra Brown Ford from Pharmacy. Sandra's cousin and his wife suffered the loss of their two-year-old baby after a brief time of being hospitalized. We pray also for a student who has suffered the death of a childhood friend. Gracious Father, for these families and all who mourn, we pray peace in your love and presence. Grant them comfort in their time of loss, in the promise of eternal life for their Father and all who trust in Jesus as the Savior.
We pray for the father of online graduate student Christine Guella. He is in hospice care and nearing the end of life. Heavenly Father, grant Christine's father freedom from pain and for a peaceful end of life and strong faith in Jesus as the Savior until life's end. We pray for many in need of healing. The aunt of student Elena Haselberg, who was diagnosed with advanced cancer, the mother of Ashley Dickman from the Mayo Center, who is undergoing medical tests for a possible recurrence of cancer. For the grandfather of student Renee Lund, who was in an accident and now is beginning extensive rehabilitation. Also, for both parents of a nursing student who are hospitalized and very ill in Africa, we pray also for the student who is traveling to be with them. Heavenly Father, for each of these, your servants and all who look to you for healing, we pray for wisdom and skill for the doctors and all who attend to them, for healing according to your gracious will and for strength and for comfort in your love and presence in their times of need. We pray Thanksgiving with alumnus Austin Berlage and his family and his wife Haley on the birth of a baby girl. We pray blessings and good health on this young family. We lift up a Concordia staff member who is facing some difficult decisions. We pray peace and the comfort of knowing your love and the prayers and support of others. We pray for the congregation of St. Paul Lutheran Church in Beecher, Illinois, which suffered an extensive fire on Sunday. We pray comfort for them in the loss of a historic building and peace in your love and care. Finally, gracious Father, hear our prayers again this day during this pandemic. Renew our efforts to care well for each other and continue safe practices. Bring healing to those who are sick and comfort to those who have suffered loss. Hear these and all the prayers on our hearts and in our minds as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.